definition of entrepreneurship for me is taking that innovative idea and applying it to a process that adds value uh, to a business, a service, or, or, a, or a group of people trying to do something, whether it's just a nonprofit or, a, or a whatever. Uh, but the point is, it doesn't have to be creating a new business. I think that's a, often a misunderstood, uh, at least not in my opinion. Welcome to Innovate Fort Worth, the podcast where we highlight local innovation and the people bringing those innovations to market. I'm Cameron Cushman, and today we have a very special guest on the podcast. President Michael Williams is here to talk about how innovation in Fort Worth is creating solutions for a healthier community. Dr. Michael Williams is the president of the University of North Texas Health Science Center at Fort Worth and is a passionate leader in the local community. He's a DO, MD, and an MBA, but he will tell you that first and foremost, he's an entrepreneur at heart. Under his leadership, HSC has embraced a culture of values-based collaborative teamwork that is transforming the HSC campus and community. He's committed to changing the way healthcare providers serve patients and families and improve the healthcare community and to building the entrepreneurial ecosystem in Fort Worth and beyond. President Williams, welcome to Innovate Fort Worth. Thank you, Cameron. It's great to be here. So let's start with the fact that you're a Fort Worth native. What was it like growing up here and how did you end up in the medical field? Uh, it was great growing up in Fort Worth. I loved it. I grew up on the north side of town and um, you know, spent weekends often with my grandfather going to uh, People probably don't know this, but and I'm going to date myself now. But riding horses over in Forest Park, behind where Old South Pancake House is now, and uh, uh, going to the you know Forest Museum of Science and History, or going to the stockyards when they really had animals everywhere and it wasn't a, a tourist tra attraction. So it's just a great place to grow up as a kid, and uh, and I was influenced about medicine from uh, actually my first interactions with my pediatrician and then I grew up with you know going to him and Randall Randall Nyman was his name and he was well known here in Fort Worth and he was somebody who influenced me um, by the way he cared for me and uh, and uh, as someone that that could embody what I might want to do in the future so that had a lot of influence on me and then and then very significantly uh, a lady by the name of Dr. May Owen who um, was here took me under her wing and um, she had a group of, at that time it was all men, but she had a group of men she called May's Boys, and she kind of guided us through college and guided us uh, into medical school. And uh, she was one of the first women pioneers uh, in medicine and in pathology. So she was a great, great influence on my life. Very good. So in your early career, you pursued both a DO and an MD degree, which is really rare, and then you went on to get your MBA why did you choose that path and how do you think that's helped you throughout your career? Well, you know, medicine trains people, um, or his, it did certainly when I went through, in a way that's very um, rote and consistent and tracks. It's because you want some um, repeatability to the process of the, of the quality of the information you're giving the, the students and, and kind of what you're, you're turning out. Um, but what I realized was I really had a love of business um, when I started my first anesthesia group, but I didn't have, I realized really quick, I not only did not have credibility in that space, I didn't have the understanding of what, how to really think about things, how to, how to put together a, an accounting operation or a marketing operation or those kinds of things. So I went back to Duke um, for two years to get an MBA there, and that was I would tell you that was the most impactful education I got. Uh, those two years completely transformed the way I think about almost everything. And so I, I really have a lot to owe them and, and how they influenced me. Uh, and actually then that was my first introduction into the whole what really entrepreneurship was. They had, had an entre entrepreneurship uh, course, it was elective, I took it. Uh, we got into the student uh, competition and we had a team and we had to put the project together and we actually ended up winning the competition so it, it was a lot of fun. 
I got really excited about the whole topic and uh, that's what got it in my blood early on. So Duke had a lot of influence in, in the So the MBA was just a degree, but what really got me was the mindset change. Got it. So it sounds like you kind of had that learn by doing experience as an entrepreneur. Uh, how did that kind of manifest itself into your own entrepreneurial journey that, that kind of intersected with medicine and an anesthesiology group and other aspects of your career? Well, again, because I think it changes the way you think about problems that you see and, uh, and the opportunity to feel kind of like, hey, there's really not anything I can't give some thought to and how I could address this or change it or make it better. Um, and so it's kind of, you kind of get this uh, almost no holds barred, the world's whatever you want to make it kind of uh, thinking. And so it influenced me very early to begin thinking about the way things are done now does not mean the way they've got to be done. So it began causing me to think, okay, well, we can start this. And so I started my first uh, anesthesia group uh, by myself as a single founder. Um, we grew that group to about uh, 12 or so when I left and I sold it to my partners. It's now up to 30 or 40. It's a, it's a large group in Dallas and uh, it has sustained all the way through. But it really, um, uh, I think again, it allowed me to think, okay, if there's a problem, then how can I think about that problem to innovate around that problem and then how do I apply it into something, either business or service or, or opportunity for, uh, for doing something later on. So that's how, how I kind of approached it. So that led to a lot of my other um, entrepreneurship experiences. And, uh, and usually a lot of the most entrepreneurs are looking and they either go through a problem personally and they figured out I can make this better. So that was the first thing. I applied to buy a house, went through a mortgage process. It was completely horrific going through a traditional mortgage process uh, in a bank at that time. And so I decided to, to just create a new company. We created a new mortgage company. I didn't know the first thing about mortgages or mortgage banking, but we started a new company all built around customer service and the customer experience. And it ended up uh, being very successful. We built, were fortunate to build a really good team um, we took a bunch of market share away and, uh, and we had a lot of return customers and all the things you want to see and then I, I, I hopefully got the right time and sold that to, to my partner as well. And then uh, I, I got with another former classmate because the other joke in an MBA programs are you know just enough to be dangerous so usually what you do is you go start a franchise or something and you end up losing a lot of money. Uh, fortunately I didn't have that problem. Uh, but um, he came to me and we said, hey, I got this idea about a software program. So again, I didn't know the first thing about putting a software company together, but we we've thought, okay, we can make this problem in hospitals better to where we can help hospitals capture revenue that they're not capturing and help doctors get more accurate diagnoses. So we, we got with a programmer and we programmed soft software from start and uh, ended up um, developing a software that triangulated between lab, pharmacy, and imaging studies to give a picture of a patient that physicians might not be seeing completely. And then it also allowed for better coding for the hospitals. So hospitals saw significant coding improvement, I mean uh, revenue improvements. And um, that company got bought by a publicly traded uh, large physician group nationally uh, very early in the process. So uh, we sold that. Um, and then probably the most fun thing I did, and probably the, one of the riskiest things I did was uh, I took the opportunity to, to take over running a, uh, a rural hospital, about a 100-bed hospital. And I thought, okay, I don't have any idea what I'm doing running a hospital. I had no training to do that. And I thought, but I can create, it. we can do this as a laboratory experiment. Because the hospital was tanking, it had all kinds of horrible uh, parameters and metrics in patient satisfaction, patient engagement, employee engagement. And so what we did was um, I thought, okay, I want to create an amazing employee culture. So I went and visited Southwest Airlines and I got the chance to meet the, the lady who ran HR, uh, Human Resources, under Herb Kelleher and was one of the original founding team. She was also a founder of JetBlue. We got to be friends. I said, look, I don't, I'm running a rural hospital. I have no money but I could use, use your help in building an amazing employee culture. So she helped me. I realized that uh, people didn't know how to answer the phone properly. They didn't know the cafeteria service was horrible. I found a young guy who was a new global trainer at Ritz-Carlton 
uh, through a trip I was on and got him to come join us. And so he transformed our entire customer experience in the hospital. And then the last thing I did was, that was a lot of fun, I went over to the Toyota plant in San Antonio, met two Toyota engineers and brought them in and got embedded in the hospital and they did a Toyota Lean project on the whole hospital. And in the end, uh, it was a fun ride and uh, the, the hospital had huge success. Um, and we had a great team and, and so it was basically, I, it wasn't like anything obviously you sell, but that was like an entrepreneurial effort where you actually give that back to the community uh, that depended on that hospital. So those are, those are some of my most fun ones that I've done. And that, that was the hospital in Fredericksburg, right? And right. you won a Malcolm Baldridge Quality Award, right? Yeah, the fun thing for the team to see through the journey was that uh, when we started, the hospital was ranked 40, in the 40, like almost 4,500 out of 6,000 U.S. hospitals. Wow. When we finished, uh, literally the last quarter before I left to come here to Fort Worth to take this opportunity, uh, we got a call from Medicare that we were um, the number four hospital in the nation and the number one in Texas in wow. patient experience, patient satisfaction, and, and patient quality. Um, and then we, we won the Malcolm Ballridge Award for leadership in 2013. It was us, this little 100-bed hospital, and Duke University Medical Center. Oh, and, wow. And then the next year we won the, the presidential uh, award that, would, that President Reagan started um, for the top quality uh, business in the country. And it was us and actually a St. David's Hospital in Austin that won it in 2014. Um, those were, the, those were and it was a fun for the team to see that as we went through that multi-year journey to get there. Fantastic, so yeah. anesthesia group, mortgage company, software solution for doctors and then running a hospital. That is, that is quite a, a mix of different things. How did, you, how did you kind of parlay your, your strengths in those very different businesses? Well, I think, you know, entrepreneurs, <laughs> you, we have this crazy side and you know, you know what I'm talking about where you think there's not many things you can't learn. You can't learn at to the same depth the ex experts can do. But what you can do is bring the things that you know how to do. What I knew how to do was put a team together, uh, build a culture, uh, take uh, disruptive ideas and innovations, and work with the team to build those. Uh, and I always was, was gifted enough to know that I wanted to surround my pe myself by people much smarter than me. So you surround yourself by really smart people, and uh, they'll make you look smart, and, and uh, you end up creating a fun opportunity to create, to create value, uh, which I think is what entrepreneurship is really about, um, for a group of people. So uh. so you have a great definition of entrepreneurship, and, you, and you've touched on this a little bit, but would you give us your definition, and, and how do you see that being applied in your current role at HSC and in the Fort Worth ecosystem? Well, you know, when you're trying to introduce a thought into or a way of thinking into a, an environment that, that normally has not considered that aspect of things, uh, much like where we are right now, um, I had to back up a little bit and, and start talking about, okay, well, first of all, what's the difference in innovation and invention? And so we talk a lot about innovation being uh, the ability to see a problem, create a new solution, or adapt a, an existing ser a service or process uh, in a way that makes it either more efficient or, or, uh, or more effective. So it's that innovative idea first as, as, as it approaches the problem is, is the first thing to understand. And then the definition of entrepreneurship for me is taking that innovative idea and applying it to a process that adds value uh, to a business, a service, or, or, a, or a group of people trying to do something, whether it's just a nonprofit or, a, or a whatever. Uh, but the point is, it doesn't have to be creating a new business. I think that's a, often a misunderstood, uh, at least not in my opinion. I think anything you take an innovative idea, create a process to apply it into where it becomes a way we do things, then uh, to me that's entrepreneurship. And uh, so for example, when I was in the hospital and we brought Rich Carlton in to work in the, um, our cafeteria and, and, our, and this is a little 100 bed hospital, uh, like you said, in Fredericksburg. So we're an hour and a half from Austin, an hour and a half from San Antonio. I, I hired a guy to run the cafe who was entrepreneurial minded. 
And he came up with an idea, hey, hospitals smell like alcohol all the time when you walk in them. Patients don't like, nobody wants to come to the hospital, period. So how can we create an environment at the cafeteria where people want to come eat there like it's a restaurant? Well, he goes down to the farmer's market and gets the guy who makes homemade bread to come, hires him to come to the hospital, makes homemade bread in the hospital. So every morning, this, this wafing through <laughs> the hospital of, of freshly baked bread. It reminded me when I was a kid growing up, growing up in the West Freeway, Fort Worth, smelling Baird's oh, Bakery. Oh, yes, that was so great. The, the old Baird's Bakery was, you know, I just loved that aspect yeah. of the freeway. Uh, so, but to getting other people to think entrepreneurially that how to can, how to can, okay, it's an innovative idea, but that innovative idea can die if it's not applied. And to me, that's the entrepreneurial piece that's got to happen to, to make innovative ideas a part of our daily life. Um, so that was fun, but the, the passion behind a lot of this too, that I really didn't talk about first is, um, you know, there's data to show that like in my world, the average new discovery in medicine that's scientific proven, if it's a new medic, it's proven to be safe, it's proven uh, to be ready for the market, uh, can, at least historically, this is several years ago, the data is, uh, is somewhat old, but it took 17 years for that new discovery to enter into the medical field in a way to where it's everyday practice. Wow. So how could you take that, that kind of mindset and, uh, um, and shift it to a much shorter process? Yeah. Definitely takes a while to get to, to market, and that's, yeah. that's a huge problem for medicine, so no doubt about it. But, but expand on that a little bit and tell me why you think entrepreneurship is important to students, not just here at HSC, medical students or students in any, any of the schools here, but, but also just in, in, in medicine and, and in uh, education in general. Why do you think entrepreneurship is important? Oh, I think it's hugely important. I think, I think because, again, it's a, it's a mindset shift. If, 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 if we don't have an entrepreneurial mindset or you can't, you can't train people to begin thinking in that way, then we just accept things as they are. You know, we just become, for lack of a better word, become victims of the processes that we're in every single day, whether it's a business service or, a, or the way things are done um, in travel or some parts of your daily life, you know, you'll see things all the time and you'll go, this could be better. Uh, if you don't have that, then you just become accepting of everything. So to me, I want, I don't, I want our students, well, let me back up for a second. So historically, entrepreneurship was taught in business schools. And, and that, that certainly was for my growing up, that was the right place. However, uh, I'm a believer that entrepreneurial thinking ought to pervade every aspect of life and every grade level. Um, because I think we would have a different mindset around how our whole country operates and how we look at things fresh and how we're willing to be open. That's the other thing, you gotta have, to be an entrepreneur, you have to be open to new ideas and not close-minded. So now taking that to where we are at the Health Science Center, um, and again, to your point, I think it's true no matter what kind of student you are, but just in our case, I thought healthcare is a state, or, state industry, much like higher ed, there is nothing that needs to be disrupted more than those two industries. Why not create a group of students that are, are thinking all the time about how can I see this problem differently and how can I be willing to create something new here? So um, the irony is the students took to it a lot faster than, than <laughs> the, the faculty the, the and faculty, staff. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So, but it's going really well now and thanks to you, you and, and the whole team here. Um, you guys have been amazing with that. And so now, you know, we have coursework in it. And uh, I was so, I had so much fun coming to the first Student Entrepreneurship Club. I think they had like 30 members. And before that night was over, there was 100 and something. So it's clearly what students want to learn more about. Yeah. And uh, we, did the, we, we just need to get out of the way. Yeah. Uh, so I think I want to see a generation of physicians and PAs and nurses and other healthcare providers that approach everything in their daily life, everything in the patient's life with an entrepreneurial filter. That's great. So Dr. Williams, what other innovations are you seeing that are happening right now at HSC that you want to share with the community? Well, I think some, um, you know, some of the research is clearly innovations. What we're seeing is um, 
I think you've already had, I think, uh, Dr. O'Brien on as a guest, and I think the stuff, the, the, not the stuff, the work that he's doing uh, around neurodegenerative disease and Alzheimer's is incredibly important, and it's, uh, it's an amazing, um, disruptive kind of mindset of, of how he's approached the whole topic of Alzheimer's and Alzheimer's therapy. Uh, so I think that's amazing. Uh, I think some of the work that's gone on in the um, Center for Human Identification that people don't even really know about that in our forensic genetics lab uh, with Dr. Badoli is, uh, is, is an amazing work and there's continued innovations that are going on in that space all the time about how they look at uh, uh, missing persons, remains, or cold case files or those kinds of things. Uh, but, but something that's near and dear to my heart is a lot of the work that they're, they're doing around human trafficking. Mm-hmm. And there's innovations around how do you educate law enforcement judges, uh, medical students or other students around how to interview or pick up on the signs of a possible human trafficking victim. And people might not think of this as a particularly sexy, innovative space, but the point is um, doing it in a way to where people are impacted by the education. So they're focused on, right now, part of the education. And so what they're doing with virtual reality uh, training is very cool because you put the goggles on and you're going through a process and you begin to learn that human trafficking victims, for example, are not how we normally characterize them. It's very different, actually. That's great. That's great. Yeah, people don't realize we have literally. I call it a CSI crime lab on yeah. our campus. That's I mean, it's like the it TV is. show, yeah. and it goes on right here in Fort Worth. Yeah. And we're big podcast fans, and occasionally, you know, we get references in these true crime podcasts that are so popular because sure. they're sending samples to Fort Worth, and we do the analysis. That's and, right. and most people just don't realize no, all that's people, going on right no, here. No, that's right. They don't know that. You know, the Florida Boys Home. Our team was there. The John Gray, uh, Gacy thing in Chicago. They mm-hmm. were there. Uh, some exam- some people from here went to 9/11. Um, so yeah, people don't people don't understand those kinds of things. And and there's some innovative ideas that people would never really hear much about it that's going on in some of the, the underserved communities of, of Fort Worth that we're doing through our health disparities work as well. But we're also always well, certainly I'm trying to always challenge our team to how can we think about this or that or whatever it is differently in a way that improves things and adds, adds more value. Mm-hmm. So people in the community are sometimes confused why HSC has led initiatives in this area that build the entrepreneurial ecosystem in Fort Worth. And uh, you've done a great job kind of describing your views on entrepreneurship. But initiatives like Sparkyard, Global Entrepreneurship Week, the Investing in Biotech Conference, and even this very podcast have come out of HSC, which may seem like a stretch for most people. How do you see these efforts fitting into both the mission of HSC and into the broader community? Well, I think part of HSC's mission is to impact, in many aspects, the broader community of Fort Worth and the North, and North Texas. Um, and of course, it, it also helps that I have a strong bias towards Fort Worth in terms of trying to add value here to my, my home. Um, and it's, it's really saddens me to sit and think, um, uh, you know, I could sit around and feel sorry for Fort Worth or, or where, where our standing is in, in entrepreneurship innovation compared to other cities like Austin, San Antonio, Houston, uh, others around the country, not to mention the, the mega uh, cities of, in entrepreneurship like San Francisco and Palo Alto, but um, in Boston. So it was out of uh, some hunger that I had to see if we could make a difference. And why not? Health Science Center is a state-supported university. We can sit by and just say, we do healthcare, we don't do that. And the reality is we have an opportunity, and I think a service and a duty, uh, and an ethical and moral obligation to see what we can do to enhance the overall quality of life in Fort Worth. I think Fort Worth is desperately behind. Uh, You and I have talked about this many, many times. I think for whatever reason, there has not been a strategic direction that supports innovation and new job growth through the creation of new business. Um, And I know you and I both agree on this, as there is nothing better in terms of an engine for, for workforce creation, new job, excuse me, and workforce uh, employment opportunities than new job creation uh, through new businesses. So I'm, this is like a passion for me. I'm determined that we will lead that. And it's kind of like, okay, why not? Uh, 
there wasn't anybody else really stepping up. We stepped up. Um, and through uh, partnering with people like Les Crease and Bowes Partners, uh, I know he and I have been on, I can't tell you how many lunches and breakfasts and other meetings trying to get some stimulus uh, of energy kicked in to get this thing going in Fort Worth. Um, and I think part of it is, you know, last thing I'll say on that is you stay where you are, you're sliding backwards. When you're playing it safe, you're sliding backwards. So I don't understand why we're not making this a key strategy. And so that's where that's my drive. And the Health Science Center, uh, well, at least certainly while I'm here, it'll be a key, key uh, player in that whole space. Well, and you recently led, to, to put this into action, you recently led one of the task forces for the Fort Worth Now initiative, which was an initiative that uh, former Mayor Price launched with John Goff and Elaine Agather to kind of figure out what some of our economic development strategies as a city were gonna be in the, in the post-COVID period and that economic downturn. How did that process work and what do you think it yielded? Well, I really appreciate uh, the, the mayor, uh, our former mayor and uh, Betsy and, and, and Mr. John Goff and, and uh, Ms. Elaine Agather stepping up to lead that initiative. I think like many things, it could just become another uh, committee group that people spend time on and nothing ever comes out of it. Uh, I got the honor of leading the subtask force um, uh, in innovation and entrepreneurship. And so we worked with a small group of people to put together a list of four or five key ideas. Uh, one of those was to work with uh, an idea that you actually brought forward, which was to bring a, a create an opportunity for Fort Worth to have its first accelerator here and through the work, working with Techstars. And so uh, working closely with uh, Mr. Goff and others in the, in, in the city, uh, I think we're really very close. We're like, we're like at the one yard line of getting it across the goal line to have a, a Techstars accelerator here coming in the next year. And I'm really excited about that, um, especially in a space that's not, that's in ripe for disruption. And that space being physical medicine or physical therapy, um, what we refer to as physical rehabilitative, rehabilitative medicine. Um, so creating that, that was a, that's a potential big output for uh, uh, Forth now. The second one was, Somebody in the higher ed space that I think is also very innovative is uh, Dean Bobby Adier at uh, the Texas A&M Law School. And Bobby and I are good friends and, and we've talked a lot about innovation and entrepreneurship. I know he has focused that school around two key areas, one being healthcare law and innovation and entrepreneurship law, related law. And so Bobby's very innovative in some of the coursework he's created. Um, and in this space. And so we worked together and, and a lot of conversations came out of several conversations that we had plus conversations on my team to, that has led to a broader conversation of bringing uh, Texas A&M to Fort Worth. Uh, it was important to try to begin moving towards a, having a, a tier one university here, a tier one research university here. And um, so I think that those two key things, Accelerator and um, and, and the eventual uh, ability to have a tier one university here uh, that's focused in Fort Worth um, will enhance our research, re enhance biotech, and enhance uh, food technology. A lot of cool things that, that we're talking about doing. And so those are things that came out of Fort Worth now from, from certainly my aspect of that. There were other aspects on culture and education that I'm not really probably the one to speak about, but certainly on the innovation side, I'm proud of those two. And I can't thank uh, John Goff enough for his leadership. Fantastic. Well, that definitely sounds like two really transformative initiatives. So we'll look forward to hearing more about those as they as they progress. But talk a little bit about the future. Where do you see the entrepreneurial ecosystem in Fort Worth in five, maybe ten years out? If if all of these things are successful, where do you think we are looking back? Now that we're the twelfth largest city in the country, what does the future look like for us? Well, I was in Boston at the time when the biotech initiative started up there, and I saw what that ad has done, and that's been a 20-year kind of process. Um, I think I think forward five years from now, if we just begin to put an entrepreneurial infrastructure in place, that began to allow uh, more enhanced, more sophisticated opportunities uh, and tools to support new businesses, 
if we began teaching entrepreneurial opportunities or entrepreneurial thinking, or even, you know, one of the things that one of our other recommendations uh, that came out of uh, in a fourth now was, hey, in all of our, our public schools, we ought to be teaching coding. We ought to be teaching uh, these kids, I mean, they, they can adapt to it very rapidly. And Forward desperately needs a technology uh, company, and, they, and, and a technology company that um, begins branching out into an entire technology industry here. I mean, we have technology companies here. I don't mean to say that. But what I really mean is we need to, uh, to go in the space of technology because it's going to influence everything else that goes on. Yeah. So I think five years from now, we could be in a dismal place. Or five years from now, you said if they're all successful. If they're all successful and we get buy-in and we get monetary resource support um, from the governmental entities here and the private sector, it can grow. We need to continue to attract investors, but investors will come more and more when we have action going on here. But first and foremost, we need the, the, the city, the county to step in and, um, and put some resources in and let those who know how to do entrepreneurship go do it. And, makes, uh, makes a ton of sense. But you know, or the, or the opposite can happen too. We can stay right where we are, we can keep talking about it, we can throw minimal dollars at it and do nothing. And, um, and continue to slide backwards. If you're going to keep doing what you're doing, you're not going to like what you got, right? That's right. That's, That's right. exactly right. Uh, Dr. Williams, who is your favorite innovator in Fort Worth? You know, it's somebody you've never heard of, probably. Uh, <laughs> Those are our favorite. I love it. <laughs> uh, his name's Ryan Huff. Ryan's a young guy, uh, very innovative, one of, one of the most incredible optimists I've ever met. Um, he happens to be a fitness trainer that I work with at uh, Zen 22, and um, he launched a company a few years ago called, uh, uh, called Qualified Apparel, um, uh, and he and he has a, a very the business has gotten very successful now. Uh, what I love about it is he started it from scratch. Here he was, this fitness trainer, and I don't begin to know how much of any business training Ryan has, but he's intuitively very very smart. And uh, he began coming up with T-shirts that had very positive messages on them. Um, and, and then he added on uh, additional faith-based. He's a very faith-based uh, individual. And so just the message is a very positive, optimistic, um, and in several aspects of the business, faith-based. But, and he's had such good success now that uh, I think the latest on their website is they're, they're also take proceeds and feed families. So they've fed, I think, close to 70,000 families now. Wow. Uh, families or, or maybe 70,000 individuals, I'm not sure. But Ryan's an amazing guy, and uh, to me, he embodies what I think um, fourth entrepreneurship, fourth innovation could become uh, when you had a whole bunch of Ryans turn loose on the city uh, to create new opportunities for people. So Ryan Huff is is uh, probably somebody I admire because he, again, he embodies every aspect of what I would hope we continue to grow and develop. President Williams, thank you so much for joining me today on Innovate Fort Worth. If you want to learn more about the University of North Texas Health Science Center at Fort Worth, you can visit unthsc.edu. If you like learning about innovation in Fort Worth, please subscribe to Innovate Fort Worth and leave us a review. You can also find us on YouTube and Instagram. Calling all innovators, creatives, entrepreneurs, investors, educators, and students. Global Entrepreneurship Week Fort Worth, powered by Dell Technologies, is almost here. Mark your calendars now for November 8th through the 14th, 2021, and join the startup community in Fort Worth for a week of local events focused on innovation and entrepreneurship. You can find out more at gewfortworth.com. Want to join the conversation? Follow us on social media at HSC Innovates. Today's episode was produced by Kendall Rogers and Alex Branch. Our technical producer is Rob Upchurch, and our digital editors are Matt Hovlick and Summerlee Sherlock. Innovate Fort Worth is brought to you by the University of North Texas Health Science Center at Fort Worth, where we are driven to improve the human condition through a passion for innovation and teamwork.